Don't be friends. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. So how do you collect your salary? How do you apply for a job? How do you go for a birthday party of a business partner who is an unbeliever, who you have to work together with? That means when a scripture looks obviously wrong, it means you have to look again. Are we together now? The idea of friendship here, listen very carefully, is not relationship. You must understand now. He's not saying to not relate with the world. Friendship here, he's talking of an attachment, a fraternity, with respect to your allegiance, with respect to your values, with respect to the government you submit to. This is the context that James is talking about. Because as you will learn and you have learned here that everything multiplies on the basis of relationship. Many believers have erroneously carried this scripture and they have rejected every good thing in their life. Why? Because the Bible talks of friendship with the world. He's not saying to not love non-Christians. No. He's not saying to not participate in non-Christian activities. That's not what he's saying. He's talking about the fact that no matter how you relate with these people, it is important for you to understand that anything that threatens your convictions, your values, and ultimately your allegiance to God is fighting Him in your life. Are we together? Two more scriptures, and then we'll tie this up. First Timothy chapter 6, 7 and 8. I found this scripture and it blessed me so much. 1 Timothy 6 and then 7 and 8. We would have started from 6 but no problem. We will hurry up because of time. Look at this. Apostle Paul is giving us another information about this world that we need to learn. What's the information? Read with me. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out of it. Now this is a very good information. What is the information? You brought nothing into this world. And on your way out, you are not carrying anything you found here out. Verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Now listen very carefully. That means he is trying to tell you that while you interact with the cosmos, that you should be able to priorize, prioritize your life in a way and manner that does not allow you forget that all of these things the cars and the houses is simply supposed to define your comfort within your stay are we together it's like renting a room in a hotel because you are there for one week if all of a sudden you get so obsessed with the activity of that hotel as if you are not going to leave again one week will clock and you did not even maximize the state. The purpose of renting the apartment is to allow you either have a meeting or rest or do whatever you have to do. So he's giving you here a mindset of contentment that comes from knowing. It tries to give you the understanding of a pilgrim. That nothing other than God is worth dying for. Are, are you getting the understanding here now? Yes. So by the time people act as if they would die for money. As if they would die for position. As if they would die for this. This is what they are violating. We brought nothing. There is no child that was born with an ATM. You came out from your mother's womb and said, This is my ATM with my name. I brought it from heaven. No. Nobody came with a key to any house. Nobody came with a Mercedes Benz key out of his mother's womb. No. When you know this, you can look at certain things in life and just say, let it go. And they say, why? For I brought nothing. Mm. This is a revelation that will even help you in giving. You mean you just gave everything away? I brought nothing to this world. If I fall down and I die today, even this Bible will not follow me. Because it didn't come with me. Every story was written on earth here. 
That means the one thing I can take out of the earth, I must treasure it. The one thing that I can take out. Hey! Believers, let's not live like fools. We must understand the cosmos. Thank God for money. Thank God for cars. And let me tell you this. Do, do not make a mistake of thinking I'm endorsing poverty or failure. Far from it. This teaching was designed to cause you to grow. This is how we grow. By being prepared to lose things. Nothing in this world should so possess you that you cannot lose it. That is a devil and that is a cause. Joshua Selman, the Lord has a need for your car let it go oh god is yours the lord has a need for your house let it go the lord has a need for koinonia let it go the foolish man was a foolish rich man for one reason he forgot that he did not bring anything he built bands and said my soul find rest not in god find rest when you find rest in prosperity you are finished already when you find rest in certificates you are finished already when you find rest in ministry in power in anointing you are finished already we brought nothing to this world Please don't live your life over my dead body. This ten naira, it must come out. Except I'm, I will wear my father till. Uh -uh. That kind of mindset is the mindset of somebody who does not understand the cosmos. When you know you brought nothing to this world, then you will also know that you must make sure that by the time you are leaving this world, you will live empty. So why are you holding on to many things? Isn't it amazing that those who are really poor are the ones who are holding on to many things. Their hands are so full, God cannot bless them. Most people think it's blessed people who are greedy and stingy. No. That you don't have the resources are proof that your hands are too full to receive from God. It's those who released everything. He said, now give me your hands since you released everything. Understanding the cosmos. I promised you two more scripture. Let's hurry up. John 16, 33. John 16 and 33. Now, this is a big one. Believers, pay attention. Let's read together. One to read. These things I have spoken to you, uh -huh, that in me ye might find peace. You see peace again? This peace is a very serious thing. In the world... Ye shall have tribulation. You went to school. What does that mean? Whatever it is, it doesn't mean peace. <laughs> Are we together? It doesn't matter how you want to, whether it's emotional, whether it's prophetic, whatever it is, it is certainly not peace. Whatever it is, is the opposite of what God gave you. In this world, you will have tribulation. It says, but be of good cheer he never said be of good cheer the tribulation will not come there is a system i have provided also to help you overcome you are not you are not being cheerful just because of nothing you are being cheerful because there is a system that you can route your victory out of it tribulation I don't know what I did that people don't like me I'm a nice man of God I'm a nice business I help people oh dear welcome to the world of men listen the condition to go through tribulation is that you are alive it's not even that you are successful is that you are what alive i am amazed at how many believers fret you know i've shared with you my story years ago it used to bother me a lot every time I'm misunderstood and every time people you know don't seem to be comfortable with me I wonder and I say oh look at I'm very sincere my heart is well meaning what is all this nonsense until I land there is a heavy price for greatness let me educate you tonight my brothers and sisters if you ever believe that just because you are sincere well-meaning nice-hearted wonderful loving soft 
godly and then the world will have that regard for you please wake up jesus gave us this information welcome to the world he says you, if you are in the world if you go out of it you don't need to worry about this so whilst you've been praying for long life and god answered you better learn what will happen while you are living long you will be amazed to see people who disregard you and will go out of their way to show you you are nothing welcome to the world of man you will be amazed to know how many people will look at your messages and say this is nonsense you will be amazed at how many people will see your sacrifice and say this is nonsense what is there in having three children what is there in being great what is there in a phd i thought you would think everybody will celebrate you in this life and love you no let me tell you believers learn this because you see as believers I, I hope I, am i boring you tonight please please learn this you will need it in your life you know most of us as believers we are surrounded by ourselves so there is a culture that we grow with for many years everybody is wonderful even someone who doesn't like you really likes you 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 get what i'm saying so there's nothing like anger and fight when somebody say i hate you it just means you annoyed me now we are used to that soft brotherly warmth and we take that naivety to this strange world of wolves i will we'll come to that scripture you will find out that those that are in this world are not just men there is a name god gave them wolves you study from national geographic channel what wolves can do wolves are not friends do you keep a wolf in your house if another prophet was speaking you would think maybe he drank wine like noah or this this is jesus speaking pay attention to what i'm telling you because the moment believers step out of this place you are sincere and for the first time you've been hearing that they hate people now you are seeing somebody face to face i hate you period why sir this is even why i hate you again and you call Joshua Selman and say, what is this? I thought there's anointing for favor. How is this supposed to work? Ask Mary what favor did to her. Was it not because of favor Mary got into trouble? As soon as Mary was declared to be favored of God, the first thing that hit her was a scandal. Who is the real father of this child? Is it a ghost or a rabbi? Say, I'm a virgin. Virgin of where? And the Bible calls that favor. Listen and learn. You will stand in a place where they are giving bribe. Everybody is bribing and you say, no, 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 no. No, No, I love Jesus Christ. There's no collecting bribe. And because of that, someone will look at you face to face and say, you irritate me. Tribulation. Everybody loves you because you are like them. Make money. Get a job. Bring a new car and dance around and say, brothers and sisters, this is the faithfulness of God. The year of extraordinary fruitfulness. We are just in May. By next week, you will find out that there is now a problem with your shoe. There is now a problem with your worship. Have you been taught that everybody should not like you? Have you been taught that it is okay to be controversial? Have you been taught that just because you are not loved by all, just because there are people who trivialize your value, it does not mean you are valueless. Learn this and be strong on time before ignorance crushes you. Many people will give up their success because of what people are saying. And it's the same people that will run and carry it and say, thank you. It was a strategy. I was hoping you would drop it so I would pick it. Do you know how many people will continue to pray for you to fail when you are successful? They may not be Christians. They stand like the Magi looking at the stars, waiting for the report of your failure. Hi. This is the world we live in. Jesus is teaching here. 
Look at how Jesus is celebrated on a crusade ground. And the next thing he enters a city and people are looking at him. You mean you've not had that leper? This is the guy that healed him. So what? I remember years ago, I don't know if you can remember Jimmy. I went for a meeting in Congo. And that was when God really started celebrating me. Everybody was just discerning the grace and this thing was just working. Everywhere I would go to, people would celebrate me, discern the grace of God and sincerely honor me. And I went for a meeting in Congo. And I got there and the people didn't even know who the guy was. Really. And one guy just came. I remember one funny guy just came and just pushed me like that. And I just stood. I was looking at him. He may not remember. But Jimmy was, he looked at the guy. Later on, he was passing a comment about him. I said, ah, can you imagine that this guy just came and was pushed? It was later. They said, ah, that's the Joshua Selman. I was a ah, man of God. This and that and that. Is it not amazing that you are used to being celebrated until you get somewhere? They'll say, bros, shift. And they're like, Whereas somebody say, my daddy, my, my, my way maker, my, my miracle worker. You think everybody will call you king of kings. Until you get to places where they will not call you king of kings. They will call you Beelzebub. And they will say it to your face. If you don't know this about the world, you will die of heart attack. You will hate success because the burden will be too much. You will say, I was better off by myself. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, let me tell you the funny part. There are people who will now be educated on who you are and say, so what? You will think people will just know that, oh, this is Pastor Alpha, this one. Oh, sorry, you are the one I've been hearing. Say, so what? Well, how, how, how did you bring bread for me? What, what did you... I beg, please. I've had the privilege of meeting certain great men and women of God around the airport. And a few times, especially on my personal trips, I've met with them and I've tried to look for a seat just to come and greet them. And I've been surprised that some of those who were with them in maybe the lodge or wherever did not even recognize them and can push them and say everything and that person and you sometimes you can see the offense you're like ah, you don't watch tv again you don't know me i don't know you please i'm looking for my let it not surprise you my brothers and my sisters when people disregard you it is part of the things you should expect walking in the world don't carry a celebrity mindset and expect everybody to clap for you. You will meet somebody one day who will look at you and rubbish you head to toe. And if you do not have your intrinsic worth that is a derivative of who you know God has made you to be, you may not bless people again. Growth systems. Is someone growing? One last scripture. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. You will thank me for the things that you now learn. You will thank me sincerely. Not today. If you thank me today, you do understand what I said. You will thank me when you will need that light in the night. For many of you, this is broad daylight. Just keep it in your archives. The night will come. When you will be the youngest manager of your corporation and you will need this message you will play it again and cry and say lord thank you for preparing me behold now this one he, he now didn't say you are in the world he said i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves each sheep they don't relate they eat sheep. When wolves see a sheep, they will tear it into pieces. Because you are a sheep, also be a dove. Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. All this is because you are a sheep. Oh. Because you are a sheep, become a snake too. And become a dove. This is an advice. Being a serpent, you are not a serpent. You are not a dove. Borrow the quality of a serpent and a dove to make you a, an effective sheep. 
when a sheep must become a serpent and a dove to survive is a serious matter jesus is advising you hmm. i send you forth as sheep but your being efficient as a sheep will require you to be both a serpent and a dove Sila. Hmm. you mean i must go that far to be a sheep i must first be a serpent then i become a dove yes sir all because my enemy is a wolf so it takes being a serpent and a dove to overcome a wolf it doesn't take just knowing how to run notice that the serpent is slow the dove is fast all of them are required the serpent looks corny intelligent skill the dove is very innocent many times naive the purity of conscience and yet the serpent is not ignorant at all serpents don't chase you they would disguise you come near they hit you with their venom and let you to die they just watch where you die and then they slowly come to you and swallow you they make sure that they swallow you where they can hide for a long time till you digest you will never catch them you won't see the trace they don't bring blood out of you there is no trace there is no evidence other animals will eat and leave the bones you can trace it back to the mouth and catch it and say you are the one who ate this a serpent will finish you and you will not see anything there and jesus said be it to survive whoever taught you that just because you are born again living in the cosmos will just require you to be a nice person that's why you are not promoted in your office because you are a sheep alone and you stood up before your boss and said i'm a christian i won't collect bribe i would i stand for jesus you are right but you are not a serpent you are out there was a way to have done it and you called it boldness but it was not the wisdom that was required there are many believers who have done what they believe to be zeal they have believed they have done many things that looks like standing for christ i remember i had a friend years ago we we're on our way going to just very zealous funny friend and then from nowhere and they were non-christians you know what i'm talking about real fanatics in that car that can almost slaughter you in a moment and we we're somewhere there and i was just praying that we arrive safely and this my friend who is a sheep that cannot be a serpent just shouted praise the lord and then the gentleman began to teach and the way he preached he began to call you know the leader of that religion and all of that and he called this and was insulting the person and insulting and saying a lot of things ah there was silence in that car i knew i started thinking of which mystery i know what is the mystery of exemption what is what is the key how did how did how did daniel escape the lions then When you are a sheep without being a serpent and a dove, you are in trouble. Do you know at the end of it, sincerely, I tell you the truth and I lie not. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. They were almost going to pack us in a mosque to slaughter us. The driver started chanting something in anger. And someone seated in the car too started chanting in anger. It's like something you, you know what I'm talking about. This is an insult, this is that. And he does not even understand how, sir. And then when he finished all that sermon, he said, I have a brother here who will round up with closing prayer. Me. Closing prayer. Hallelujah. 
Look up, please. Not every death is dying for Christ. Some deaths are the death of a sheep that cannot be a serpent. It took the grace of God for us to arrive just in peace. And I told myself I will never travel with this guy. I was not afraid of death. It was you I was seeing. Who would teach you? Hallelujah. How many missionaries should not have died except for the way they approach their sheephood? There are people who just get up and do things anyhow. Listen, you must understand the cosmos to grow. Many of us know God, but we do not know this system. So the diplomacy to navigate this system, we do not have it. Everybody say understanding the world system. Number three, our time is gone. Goodness. I hope you are still following me. The first is your foundation. Second is understanding the world system. The third is you must understand value. I will rush this. We've dealt with this. I want to be able to reach the fourth one understanding value please look up if you want to grow spiritually and otherwise in this world you must understand that your growth your excelling will be based on your value and your value is divided into two the first is your virtue and then second your skill if all you have is education listen carefully if all you have is certificate and you do not have character you will not rise in this kingdom there are many educated people who will never rise to managerial levels because they lack virtue they have transactable skills but they do not have virtue we have dealt with this extensively in this house so I'm not going to dwell so much maybe let's just look at two scriptures very quickly number one you know Galatians 5.22? You just write that. Then let's read Colossians chapter 3, please. From verse 12. Colossians chapter 3. I really want us to read. Put on therefore, okay? And then please prepare... First Kings 7. Put on therefore, look up everybody, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, another word for patience. Next verse. Forbearing one another. These are virtues that you need to possess to be great and to sit at the zenith, the pinnacle of all that god has ordained for you if any man hath a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you also do ye next verse above all this put on charity the bible calls it the bond of perfectness let's stop there character many people have degrees but they lack character you must have solid character the fruit of the spirit to be able to rise there are people today who are employed because of their degrees but promoted because of their character when everybody has what you have your character is what distinguishes you it may be one of the reasons why many 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 graduates do not have jobs they have the technical skills but they don't have the character that can back it. You can't trust them. First Kings chapter 7 from verse 13 to 14. Hmm. This scripture blessed me. We are now talking of value in terms of skill. We 
We'll read it together. 13 and 14. Everybody read. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. 14. She was a widow's son. Who cares? But the Bible is telling you something. That the king sent for a man. He started his life as a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali. And his father was a man of Tyre. A worker in brass. And he was filled with what? Wisdom and understanding. And cunning to walk in all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. He started as a widow's son. But skill took him to a point where Solomon said, come and work for me. The Bible captured that information. He was a widow's son. His father taught him because his father was a craftsman and died. And although a widow's son, his skill bailed him out now to be in the palace. He didn't look for the king. The king, that means every king is searching. You say nobody is looking for me. It's not true. You are not the kind they are looking for. King Solomon sent for Hiram. He said, come. Prove your skill. Prove your worthiness. Nobody finds a skillful man with character and cannot forego any other excess to keep that person. It's true. Many believers have character but they don't have skill. Character is important. But it's not character that turns products into services. It will take skill. Nobody will bring into their company to come and destroy them. And the only thing you are doing is praying. That's important. But they didn't hire you as a prayer warrior. They hired you to be productive. 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 You can tell them everybody who is stealing in the store. No problem. But what result are you producing? Otherwise, you follow those who stole and, and you go. Your offense is you are not productive. Their offense is that they are thieves. Two of you. The door is open for you to go. Listen to me. Competence will pay you again and again. Let competence be your employer. Give your CV to competence. And it will pay you. You will never go on strike once for the rest of your life. Mediocrity. Mediocrity will always produce beggars. It's a deception. It looks like you are there, but you are not there. Many preachers love God, but they are not skilled. Many business people are not skilled. Listen to me. Many career people are not skilled. Value, your virtue, your character, that's important. But you must be competent. You want kings to eat your food, you must know how to cook food for kings, not men. You want kings to part, and I hope you know that you have not arrived until kings patronize you. The proof you are successful is when you serve kings. The gatekeepers of the mountains. They are the ones who don't ask how much. No. No. You rise from the realm of everybody asking how much to men who say you are too useful. I won't let you go. All oh, that will find men and women here who desire to grow. Listen, please do not let anybody trivialize the place of diligence and competence. Being skillful at something. Be a master at your field. Ministry is not for lazy people. Ministry is not for people who tried everything and failed and just came and just received the anointing. There is a skill even in the dispensing of the anointing. Preaching has a skill. You try it and find out how many people listen to you. Africa, let's wake up. Our incompetence will continue to whip us again and again. We compare ourselves with ourselves. I am better than this. I am better than that. If you get 10 over 100 and you are the highest, you still failed. You are just the highest of the failures. Listen. You must be competent from a global reference. 
benchmark yourself globally don't benchmark yourself within your territory sometimes our territories are so mediocre we don't have to do much to be that recognized you're a businessman know your craft back and forth you're a career person tell yourself you will rise to the best the confidence that knowing a thing gives you is something only God can help you understand I've met people who know what they are doing boy there is, there is an aura of favor a compelling presence that competence brings make up your mind that you will not stand at the gate of life and be chewing your finger no pay the price avoid premature manifestation sit down get something that even kings will give you a right hand of fellowship they will say we are great but you have seen all of us we have not seen all of you welcome they will welcome you by themselves you are a tailor so well you are a farmer farm well you are a public speaker speak well you are not the only one there and you are not going to pay yourself respect those who will hear you don't talk in a way that only you will understand are we together you are a scholar don't be lazy stretch to the zenith of your profession say i will be competent say it competence is more than a desire you must outsource the information that gives you an advantage in your field you are the best because of the scarcity of what you know don't find the things that are general find the things only few know that becomes your edge please listen to what i'm telling you i'm speaking especially to our brothers you must cause the spirit of laziness and mediocrity from your life prayer is no excuse for mediocrity mediocres in our world today are those who will beg for bread and be they are the ones who will be writing all kinds of stories about successful people because of the pain and the effect that other people's success will cause on them make up your mind i vowed a vow unto god that i will never be a preacher that will have to go back and bury my head in shame find out what it takes to excel and give your all and give your best it may take a while don't worry conquer pain in your life do not ever let pain be an interruption to your success pain does not kill burn the candles if you need to listen to me burn the candles if you need to wake up in the night if you need to buy the books take the certifications go for the trainings I can cook for who who can pay you i can sew for who i have a hotel for who a restaurant for who i'm a good preacher who can listen to you can men of god listen to you or is it only those who want to be born again i'm a keynote public speaker who can demand you so much that no price of hosting you becomes too much listen you know you are valuable when no amount placed on you becomes an inconvenience the moment people begin to compare price and you and say Kai, is this not a bit too much is proof that you have plateaued on your value step up there are people that there is no amount to host them that becomes a waste their presence is like the presence of God one hour with them you must change you will never be the same it has nothing to do your own is to just make sure you are in contact with them the excellency of the information they supply you will beat your ignorance to its knees you will think you are just going to receive one or two things oh goodness in five minutes they will they will embarrass your pride by making you see how ignorant you are when you become like such people gentiles will come to your light 
You hear me challenge you all the time. I will never become a pastor of weak people. I've taught you how to pray and know God, but I want you to be successful. Why must they think about you when they are downsizing? It's a reflection of your value. Be as scarce as gold. The same way people queue in front of a filling station. They are not complaining. The pump does not talk. They need the oil so much. They need the foil. They will stay from morning till night to fill their tanks and pay you and still tell you thank you. May God make you so valuable in the name of Jesus. Preachers, be so valuable and you will never beg for bread. Your blessings will come from the people you have raised. You are not raising anybody, there is no bread for the future. Listen to me carefully. You are not raising anybody, there is no bread for the future. There are men of God who are recycling the same kind of knowledge. Those who are growing know where they are getting it from. When they are blessed, they will go there. Raise men. When people complain all around and say, ah, why should you know, people be blessed? Why should a young man be blessed? Why should, what, what are you saying? When you raise people, they become too grateful to ignore you. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. It's important. Don't sit down and ask, how can I rise? It is valuable people who rise. When you become the delight of many, do you not know there is an aura of beauty that value brings upon your life? You become difficult to ignore. People will overlook anything. Be like water. Ah, be like cold water on a sunny day. How far can you ignore that? The water is not what is suffering. The effect of the sun on you will make you say, how much did you say it is? Uh, 150. Why? Because it's cold. You are wicked, oh boy, you will still buy it. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, make me valuable. Make me valuable, O oh God. Take me out of the rat race of life. I need time to serve you and your purposes. You are showing me the growth system of the kingdom. Take me out of the realm of competition. Let me rise to a dimension that is incontestable. Lifted by your grace and lifted by understanding. Is someone praying? God is challenging you. That may be why your ministry is not growing. Your call is not what is in doubt. It's not just an impartation you need. You need to grow. It's more than an impartation. Could that be why your business is not growing? It takes more than sincerity. Champions are not ignorant people. Champions do not have little knowledge. Champion have the knowledge that is an endangered species. Make me skillful, skillful. Hallelujah. Listen. Before I go to the last place, our time is gone, but please spare me a few minutes. You need what I'm about to share. This is the 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 highest discussion of all we are going to be discussing today. Before I go there, let me advise you. Always check your result against the level you are going, not against the levels available. When you preach as a man of God, listen to your messages again. Not just to be edified as a sign of humility, but also to learn. Oh, the people were following, but I can discern that I, I lost them here. Okay, next time, how can I adjust? I think there is a psychology to my communication. I need to know when the people are tired. I need to know when I've exhausted their understanding. My creativity is small. I need to step up on it. 
please don't be lazy please don't be lazy in the name of jesus sit down in the name of jesus sit down get books right wake up in the night stop snoring your night away sit down and learn buy the truth sell it not god gave you phones go and download or buy apps that can help you sit down burn the candles while you pray and you will watch the gates of your destiny open unhindered by whatever kind of factor you think can hinder it i made a vow to myself that i will not be small i shouldn't stand before kings and be ashamed do your homework and you will not need to be afraid fear is for those who are not prepared a workman that needed not to be ashamed take away the shame that incompetence brings take away from your life the shame that mediocrity brings please receive grace to sit down and do your homework sit down and do your homework are we blessed number four the last key this is so powerful you must understand men let me take you to the world of men and teach you a few things men the fourth key to your growth is the understanding of men you must understand men as a species as an entity please listen god is giving us wisdom now luke chapter 16 the first eight verses nine really but eight we'll just stop at the first eight verses profound wisdom jesus is teaching again the rabbi no wonder he is called he is not only wise remarkably intelligent jesus is teaching us something to understand men are you ready to learn and he said unto his disciples there was a certain rich man which had a steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods <laughs> follow the story next verse and he called him the rich man now called his steward and said unto him how is it that i hear this of thee give account of thy stewardship for thou mayest no longer be a steward He's about to lose a relationship with a wealthy man. That's dangerous for him. And the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me stewardship. I cannot dig. And to beg, I am ashamed. So what's going to be the way? Next verse. I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses are we together now follow the story so he called every one of his lord's debtors unto him so you can see the kind of position he was occupying and said unto the first how much owest thou my lord six remember jesus is the one telling us this story and he said an hundred measure of oil and he said unto him take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty hi write what <laughs> and he said to another how much do you owe and he said a hundred measures of wheat and he said unto him take your bill and write 80 and the lord commended the unjust steward because he had done uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh, uh -oh. I'm glad that I'm not reading from one zodiac book. This is your Bible. You have it. And the children of this world are in their generation. Talk to me. Wiser than the children of light. That's the message. The morale is not his approach. The morale was his. His idea. The method was wrong. The, the wisdom was not how he did it. The wisdom was the fortitude to understand that I'm about to lose something, but I've not lost it if I have relationships. So he said, whatever I can do very quickly, because the secret to my continuity is in the hands of men, 
If I lose one man and I gain his friends, I still have him. Listen carefully. And he was commended as being wise. His dubious attitude was not the wisdom. The discernment to connect with people and use what is a representation of favor. God told us what to do. The moment you have opportunity, use opportunity to build relationships. You preserve opportunities by investing opportunities in relationships. Listen carefully. You must understand the world of men. Woe betides anybody who does not understand men. Your wealth is stored in men. Your lifting depends on men. Your increase depends on men, not just God. If you know God and you don't know men, you will still stay small. Understand men, growth systems. Let me teach you three dimensions of understanding men very quickly. Number one, learn the expected behaviors for every environment. It's called the law of protocol. You are learning wisdom that will change your life. Some of you will begin to apply it from this night. Every environment has a system of protocol, has an expected behavior. You are not qualified to remain in that environment until you study the protocol of environment. You go to preach in a church, learn the expected behavior. You enter a house, learn the expected behavior. You stand before a great man who can bless you. Before you get to him, understand the protocol. Many believers are ignorant of the expected behavior. And they step into certain circles and step out. There are preachers that have gone to certain churches to preach. And they did not understand the expected behavior. They preach well, but they will never go back to those circles again. Is God blessing us? In Jewish days, when you came to someone's house from a long journey, you were never allowed to enter with a dusty feet. You would stand outside and their way of honoring you was that they had men servants who would come with water and oil and a sponge. They would wash your feet and clean it with toil as a proof of honor. And then you are now authorized to get into um, the place to stay. It's a principle. Many people do not know expected behavior. You meet a wealthy man and they tell you this is a millionaire. And he says, sir, anything for the boys? Sorry, you. He will give you something, but you lost the relationship. What he gave you will finish. Because you just showed him that what he has is greater than him in your eyes. And he said, you have it and go. Everybody say expected behavior. You can't be going for a job interview and dress as if you are going to a movie theater there is a persona there is a protocol this is our ignorant generation we don't have regard for these things you're going to submit a proposal for a business that is worth 100 million naira and you enter with palms and a shirt that is a bit torn and say i'm a free person you are out no right thinking person born of a woman and trained under an intelligence system will host you. I've taught you that appearance is the seed for acceptance. You minimize controversy when you appear well. Understanding men. I'm teaching you growth systems. Listen. You must understand the diplomacy of managing greatness. Diplomacy is not compromise. You will have the opportunity to stand near great people who will bless you who are not born again. They may be vulgar in their communication. They may even be sarcastic. You can stand near a man as a married woman 
who is a wealthy um, man but has no regard for family and he can be explicit even in his talk you don't just look at him and say see i'm a child of god i'm a i'm a daughter of zion mm -mm, mm -mm. take it easy take it easy there are some times that your your answer should be with your body not your mouth your body language can speak it's very important i have one of one of the blessings that god gave me is the intelligence to understand atmosphere you must be of quick discernment to understand atmosphere i taught you this um um esther knew the right time to talk there are wives who never receive from their husbands because they don't know when to ask any time is not the right time me i say my mind that's how i am that's why you are, you are where you are those who say their mind have all have been receiving a lot of things unfavorable most of them there were times jesus kept quiet even when he had what to say then he would say okay he who does not have stone have sin cast the first stone there are times that jesus looks at a man and he's about to leave his crusade to follow one man jesus have you started worshiping men a centurion comes to you and you say no don't worry i know that i'm praying for the rest but i will honor you wow and yet he's no respecter of persons he looks at a short and a little man called zacchaeus who climbs a tree and has a lot of regard for his sacrifice and his honor and he says zacchaeus you have dishonored yourself too much to honor me please come down it's your house i'm going to i must reciprocate this i want to build a relationship with you there are people whose interest i must protect you represent a gate let's go your house is worth a crusade let's go and zacchaeus by himself instead of jesus on the tree saying i will see you but will you forgive this guy he said let's go to your house that honor alone made him say i will forgive these people bank people are very wise sometimes when they want to come and ask you to open an account with them and you're a big person they don't just send you a text they visit you say how are your birthday it was yesterday say no it was last week oh last week so how are you how is everything i mean uh, the weather is hot they are wise expected behavior by yourself you will start asking them so how is the service is it beautiful we are doing absolutely well in fact there's no other time in the history of the bank that we have been this night you say you mean it yes in fact we were hoping since you brought the issue let's talk that's why they came home and they are making it look as if it's a side talk many believers are not diplomatic there are times you don't ask by asking you ask by doing what is equivalent to asking oh your lifting has come oh your lifting has come oh your rising has come So to understand men you must understand the protocol of every system learn it i've taught you that adaptation is the proof of honor adaptation does not always mean compromise there are times you have to receive grace to bend to create positive perceptions number two you want to understand men gain mastery over words Gain mastery over words. Proverbs 16 verse 24. 
any man in this generation who does not understand the power of words and how to use it to your advantage you will destroy yourself and destroy important relationships words read with me proverbs 16 24 one to read pleasant words are as an honeycomb sweet to the soul and health to the bones who runs away from this pleasantness to your soul pleasantness to your body words when you when you watch scottish films and all of that the kings had these orators right that worked with them in the palace every time they had a delegation i mean those guys were poets like shakespeare they would bamboozle you with intelligence they will they will conjure words and just keep you spellbound and at the end you see people clapping and they want to give the king gifts and they want to honor that nation words are powerful words convey thoughts words create perceptions master words you want to master men master words otherwise you can make your good be evil spoken of words are important words are important to great men they have developed their minds to be philosophical they analyze words mean men don't have value for words anything they don't think but wealthy people think you give them a document they will look at it intricately a poor man will just sign and say where is the money a rich man will say no 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 why is this clause this way god calls himself the word he knows how to speak he knows what to say for your life to change listen to me words are very important proverbs 18 20. i have seen people amass fortunes because they have mastered words a man's belly shall be satisfied not with what he buys in the market with the fruits of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled there is a relationship between poverty and words there is a relationship between prosperity and words and it's not just limited to confession understand people i've taught you this always preserve honor in your words the psychology of communication that the highest need psychological need of any man on earth i would drum this till you understand is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel important never forget that and you will gain the heart of kings i've had the privilege to talk to people on behalf of others and some of those people hitherto had vowed to never provide certain help or certain things but a five minutes conversation changed their entire minds and they were more willing to even do the things that they did not want to do can you change a man's mind with words if you cannot you are not a master of words not deception not lies that a couple a marriage that is about to break and you use words to create perceptions in both of them and they are back words translate a man from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god's dear son words are that powerful one word correctly spoken can give you a contract of millions one word wrongly spoken can destroy you i'm not just talking about grammatical accuracy i'm talking about the understanding that words paint pictures words create perception how are you pastor alpha ah well done ah huh? let me touch your small nose you say you are joking this is a man you are looking for help from you intended to crack a joke but you just lost your job words when i was a child i thought like a child i speak like a child listen to me please master words master words know how to talk to people there are times 
that your communication will require you to be agreeable there are times that you will need to stand in the position and speak from a position of weakness to be the strong one there are times you need to be weak to be strong strength does not always come as strength many times it is weakness that becomes strength words i've taught you a lot of words words such as salutation just greeting people alone for some of you you have lost favor because you cannot greet people you tell everybody how far including your destiny helper you enter an office and you are seeing people almost as if they are worshiping a god and you say bros how far says the manager oh sorry manager how far and they say go out are you here for the interview you say yes i'm a graduate of say, whatever and while you are talking go out match somebody sorry 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 words words you thought you just apologize no why do you have to employ MCs and people to conduct a meeting why don't just pick somebody and say come and conduct this wedding what do the MCs know words someone who never planned to give 10 naira simply because he was honored he will stand up and say on behalf of myself and my wife they agreed on 200,000 he said we hereby give 1.2 and the wife is looking at you this, this is kind of honor is not for two I won't disgrace myself here you didn't ask him for money you use words to do something that a charm cannot do to his ATM have your words brought you wealth? Have your words brought you open doors? Have your words given you things you didn't work for? Was it not because of what you said that doors closed against you? What you said to God? What you said to man? Daddy, let me tell you something. I've been watching you every day. Just because you are my father, I don't think I respect you. I'm just, if you, I will lock you up. Me, yes, your son. And he looks at you and says, no problem. The day somebody comes and says, the Lord is putting it in my heart to help somebody in this house. He said, there's a house help. She just finished her ND help. I said, I thought you have a master son over my dead body. Rather give me the work in my old age. I've retired, but I will work on contract. I will never watch you give this stupid son work. If he insults me poor, he will kill me when he's rich. Words create memories. Words create memories. When people remember you, it is important for them to remember peace, to remember love. That's why business people go through the rigor of training themselves on how to talk. There are so many business people in this ministry. You people call Ejimi. The apostle of wealth is the is the king king of the industry. <laughs> you don't sell by intention. There is a science to it. Can I make you like me? Yes. Can I make you hate me? Yes. Can I make you give to me? Yes. I'm not talking of manipulation. There are people who use words like a chain and casted a, permit me to use the word spell, on people. They fish their destiny helpers with words. And while they left, the helpers followed them. What are you doing? I'm following you. Why? Words. A word spoken in due season. You may speak good English and speak nonsense psychology. Words. Please learn this. Some of you need to go back and find the five or ten people who have the power to be used by God to change your life. Start doing something with words. 
uncle just to bless you and to say good evening sir um it's been a while that i kept in touch i sincerely apologize god has been faithful i honor you thank you so much i know you are busy i will be glad to call whenever you allow me to you see that statement you now look like a fool the man will say ah this man knows i'm busy he will call you by himself you never say instead of uncle how far you are my only uncle what did my father tell you before he died those those kinds of those kinds of statements you will keep authorizing demons and darkness to punish you words are powerful your father and one uncle somewhere is fighting and you are supposed to come in uncle what happened question mark who are you you are a child among the elderly people no good afternoon sir i sincerely hope you are not offended that i'm even reaching you i know i shouldn't be doing this it is in no way to communicate dishonor i understand that you and daddy may not have been not fighting may not have been at the best of state and if it will ever make any meaning i'm joining my knees and my hand on the ground to plead for the family i know many of you are embarrassed and say me to subject that's why you are poor that's why you are poor what are you proud of if you don't have what you are looking for what do you think being great is it's a combination of keys let me tell you what will happen the uncle will not reply you that's a proof that he has received what you have said that's how men process things women will respond thank you men don't act like that men think they will delete it because it's already in their mind and think through it wow this young man what can i do for him the day they see you they will act as if you are not the one but one day when the light of god's favor will shine on you they will say i remember when this guy was 14 years old i was having a challenge with the uncle can you imagine that this small boy wrote a nice letter and he said uncle i'm 41 say you think i forgot it they want to sack you from somewhere the uncle will say kill me before you sack this boy listen let me teach you this if you understand words you can be everywhere where you are not your word is there for you are you blessed don't just treat great people treat everybody words Twenty five verse eighteen. I really apologize our time is gone. We're going to round up now. But you will thank me like I said. You may not thank me after the service. Some of you will receive instant testimonies from this. Just this that you understand, man. You've been fired from your workplace and you just construct a letter or a text and sincerely apologize to your boss. And that man is ready to receive you and even promote you a man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a mall and a sword and a sharp arrow speaking about words this is what words can do they can be so destructive there are times the the way to speak is to say nothing that's how you speak hmm. i'm just imagining the results that will come out of your life when you start engaging these things let me tell you there is no power that can stop this from working it's true every man is weak to words when they are right every man including god was it not moses that said god please please calm down don't let them think that you brought the nation of israel out and you didn't have the power to take them into the promised land and god repented God repent this looks like small keys but the wonders that these keys work in your life words two minutes the last key to understanding men 
is understanding the power of endorsement please write it down you will never rise beyond certain levels until a credible voice can endorse you please learn this please learn this endorsements are powerful man of god you remain where you are in spite of the growth of the anointing until a credible voice can speak for you endorsements are powerful you may not have access to the gate so value everyone you know who is already at the gate because their recommendation their referrals their endorsement i may not trust you but i trust the person who spoke about you i have been blessed by the recommendation and the endorsement of people when you see gatekeepers don't ignore them value the endorsement of great men it took a lot of sacrifice for their voices to be heard don't think you will push them aside there are many young preachers who believe they can push any other man of god and just stand and gain a voice keep going save johnny until you know that men are not that fragile before they listen to you they will look at the person they listen to what does he have to say about you there are many churches before i come they ask questions who knows apostle who has listened to him and then usually one influential person will raise his hand and say ah my son i've not listened to him but i overheard my my son's life has changed please let that man come immediately every church meeting is over bring apostle you would have been doing business with kings if the right voice spoke to you john had to endorse jesus he didn't just ordain him he endorsed him if there is nobody who can speak into your life not just in terms of prophesying but to give a good word you can easily get a job when someone speaks for you hello please um i know that they are collecting this this oil company people please uh yes that lady number 76 please she's my daughter eh please 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 don't worry we'll talk later on and that's it you have gotten the job whereas someone else is saying father help me the angel of the lord keeps hovering around his breakthrough but there's no man to use because he ignored every he prayed and his prayer brought angels but he ignored men so there is nobody to speak for him number 24 who knows him nobody please remove him and give number 77 because three people have called for his sake the same thing with men of god do you know it's a terrible thing if you don't have men who can rise for you i don't mean psychophants nobody to defend what you represent nobody to stand up and advocate for you there are parents who don't have anybody speaking for them the only person who can speak for them is their children they didn't raise anybody today who can speak for them there are times you are not the one holding the rod but you can hold the hands of the person holding the rod so that they can speak and say if you ever need somebody to hold a hand this person there are times that i have been called you may not know but some of the students who graduate and are serving and nccf and all of this sometimes i get text messages from the leaders who are interviewing new people and I, they say ah apostle please we interviewed so 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 he said he's a member of koinonia what do you have to say about him we are considering making him this this and that and sometimes i say ah with all pleasure he was effective he was useful that's it you don't have to know the same way right now while you are seated here the angel of favor is at the ears of your helper but because you did not connect with them you didn't leave memories that will compel them to reciprocate kindness mm. that you continue to plant yourself in the hearts of people through honor plant yourself in the heart of gatekeepers 
Everybody who thinks about who to help is thinking about you. You will never go down that way. No. There are people who have eaten from your hands today who will never allow anybody speak evil of you. You have become part of them. Preachers lend this. Business people lend this. We are going to pray. We've stretched you today and I sincerely and truly apologize. But I give you one guarantee. You will see fruitfulness in ways that will surprise you. Make him, make him,